For over half of the Americans, 2020 has been a personal financial disaster. Approximately 98% of Americans will be severely impoverished because we've always used toilet paper in transactions. The $600 stimulus payout is really permission given to Americans to borrow $600 worth of fiat currency from the Federal Reserve Banks. These banks are private banks. They loan the U.S. Department of Treasury money created out of thin air. This money is not backed by gold or silver but can be used to buy just about anything anywhere. Every U.S. dollar says Federal Reserve note on it meaning that it is loaned from the Federal Reserve banks and is supposed to be paid back with interest. It is a crazy system that supports the leading world reserve currency so far. China has their eyes on this status and would like nothing better than for the U.S. dollar to lose that status. The current U.S. national debt includes all the money owed to the Federal Reserve Banks and stands at about $25 trillion. This debt keeps increasing without it being paid back. How long this system can continue is anyone's guess. But history shows most democracies that went to fiat currency lasted about 250 years. It looks like the USA is dangerously close to that end. One of the big reasons why so many Americans are angry about the size of the stimulus payments in the relief bill that Congress just passed is because this year has truly been a financial disaster for millions upon millions of people. More Americans than ever before are just barely scraping by from month to month, and $600 is just not going to go very far. In 2020, small businesses have been getting slaughtered by the thousands, millions of Americans are in imminent danger of being evicted from their homes, and more than 70 million new claims for unemployment benefits have been filed since the pandemic first started. The US has plunged into a brutal economic depression, and most of the country is desperately hoping that the federal government will do more to bail them out. Of course the truth is that we can't actually afford another $900 billion stimulus package, on top of all the other stimulus packages that were already passed this year. We are already $27.5 trillion in debt, and all of this reckless spending is putting us on a highway to hyperinflation. But most Americans don't really care that we are literally destroying our national finances. Most people are in desperate need of money, and the vast majority of them want checks from the government as soon as possible. A one-poll survey that was just released asked Americans about the current state of their finances, and that survey discovered that a whopping 55% of us consider this year to be a personal financial disaster. While there is no question 2020 has been an unparalleled health challenge, many are not losing sight of how devastating the year was for their wallets as well. A new survey finds over half of Americans, 55%, consider 2020 a personal financial disaster. That is over half the country. And for those that are employed, that same survey found that 62% are planning to take on a second job in 2021 in an attempt to make ends meet. Among employed respondents, 59% in total, 7 in 10 say they need a raise at their job in order to make ends meet. 62% plan on taking on a second job in 2021 to meet their financial goals next year. That number can't possibly be correct, can it? Of course there aren't that many jobs to go around. Already, there are millions upon millions of Americans that can't find a first job. As I discussed the other day, we have got unemployed workers sleeping in lawn chairs or sleeping in their own vehicles because that is all they can afford at this point. We haven't seen anything like this since the Great Depression of the 1930s, and this latest wave of lockdowns is making things even worse. With so many Americans financially hurting, it shouldn't be a surprise that millions of households are getting behind on their rent and mortgage payments. One in seven renters with family incomes from $35,000 to $100,000 were not current on their rent in November. The overwhelming majority of these renters 79.9%, expected to face eviction within two months. Similarly, 9.6% of homeowners with a mortgage were not current on their mortgage in November. And 56.1% of those homeowners expected they will be foreclosed on in the subsequent two months. Congress keeps extending moratoriums on rent and mortgage payments, and that has been financially devastating landlords and mortgage holders. At some point the moratoriums must end, and when that happens we are going to see a tsunami of evictions that will be absolutely unprecedented in US history. Meanwhile, many Americans are going very deep into debt in a desperate attempt to keep themselves afloat financially. 
more than one-third of households with incomes between $35,000 and $100,000 borrowed from credit cards, other loans as well as from friends and family to pay for their current expenses in November. Soon, debt payments will come due, burdening families that still suffer from long-term unemployment and added health care costs. This could mean rising credit default rates as well as spillovers of economic pain to other households, from who people borrowed to pay their bills. If economic conditions were to return to normal in 2021, most Americans would be able to weather this financial storm just like they did in 2008 and 2009. But things are not going to return to normal next year. Instead, this new wave of lockdowns is going to cause thousands of more businesses to close and will force millions more Americans onto the unemployment rolls. What we are doing to our small businesses is absolutely criminal. At this point, small business revenues are down more than 32% nationwide since the month of January. Small business revenues have also taken a hit nationwide. The national average is a decrease of 32.1% in small business revenue since January. Washington, D.C. had the worst loss in the nation at 61.6%. Oregon small businesses lost 16.3%. Illinois small businesses saw 39.2% decline in revenue since January. Every day, more small businesses are closing up shop permanently. Millions of hopes and dreams have been brutally crushed, and there is nothing that our politicians can say or do that will bring those businesses back to life. If you have lost a business or a job this year, then that would definitely qualify as one of the personal financial disasters of 2020. And as you have seen in this video, you are far from alone. Most of the nation is deeply hurting, and the road ahead is only going to get more challenging. In the short term, stimulus payments from the federal government will definitely help tens of millions of suffering Americans. But of course every additional dollar that our government borrows and spends just makes our long-term problems even worse. A national economic meltdown has begun, and our politicians will try lots of things to mitigate the damage, but all of their solutions will only help temporarily. This is going to be an exceedingly dark chapter for America, but most Americans still do not understand the true nature of the crisis that is now unfolding all around us. I think we need to take care of our people. Not just any class of people discriminated against because they were smart enough to make good incomes after hard-earned skills. Let us not forget the people out of work because some dumb governor or politician put them in the position of being unemployed. Government mandates should be illegal activities and civil damages due people affected by these mandates should be able to sue the people involved in putting them out of work. That said the reality of the situation is government with the intention of saving lives put these people out of work. The reality is no one thought to compensate landlords for the damages done by making laws that people could not be evicted for failure to pay rent. Landlords for the most are not rich. They pay mortgages the same as a lot of other people only with the investment of renting people houses, often at rents that do not even approach the financial investment. Often the landlords are in it for a tax break. There is a cancer in our government. It needs to be removed. If that means removing the governors of the states for reaching far too much over their jurisdiction then so be it. I suggest multiple legal civil suits against said government officials that have created this financial illness we are all being affected by. The first thing modern medicine needs to do is tell the truth no matter how hard that becomes. Without honesty, you are part of the devil's workshop and that is not good. Hold our government responsible for what they do. Hold them responsible for mandates that are totally unconstitutional. The only mandates have to be laws produced by our government legislatures both at the federal and the state level. The law is flexible enough for short-term emergency situations. But this is far beyond short-term. Make the legislatures do their job. If they will not take that responsibility to do their jobs then recall or impeach them as procedures allow. Those of us taking an interest in the global debt problem were aware after the period of irrational exuberance and the dot-com crash over 20 years ago that we were heading for the last chance saloon. The GFC Great Financial Crisis of 2008 was the last chance saloon and our politicos and establishment apparatchiks together with their paymaster banksters decided to double down on a losing bet. Instead of restructuring the indebted economies they have gone for broke with everyone who can cashing in their chips before the rotten monetary system collapses. 
Those living in the apparent safety of a digital world with their apps, social media and other forms of circus will soon wake up to reality. You don't necessarily have to tweet but you always have to eat. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.